Today we're going to be covering chapter 2.2, find slope and rate of change. So slope, we've actually already seen in our formula in the y equals mx plus b formula that we know already, specifically as the m in that formula. As you can see in the definition here, slope, or m, of a non-vertical line is the ratio of vertical change to horizontal change. And you'll see that's rise and run, which, rise and run, which I will explain. It's pretty self-explanatory, but the vertical change, so on this graph, the vertical change would be between these two points, the top and the bottom, and the horizontal change would be these points. So basically just knowing what horizontal and vertical mean, and those are rise and run. And the ratio of those together, we get this diagonal line. And so the ratio is the rise and the run, the rise and the run, etc. Now if we just see a line, we can kind of approximate what the slope would be, but we don't know the precise quantitative amount for that formula, or sorry, for the slope, so we use the formula for slope, which is m equals, remember m is slope, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So when we're plugging into this formula, we need points for our y sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 1, and x sub 2. And so if we take a point on one on this line we have here, and say we have this point here. I'm just using a big dot to show that, but say that's um, 5, 5. So one of our points is 5, 5, and our other point down here is 0, 0. So 0, 0. And we need to label those as our x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Because, again, these are our x values, these are our y values. And it doesn't really matter what order you can put these in, it can go either, as you can see when we get our answer. So plugging this in, we have y sub 2, so 0, minus y sub 1, so 5, over 0, minus 5. You can look back on the formula to see where I got that, but it looks the same in this specific problem because we have such a similar uh, variables, or sorry, some such similar points that we're plugging in. So as an answer, we get one. So using an actual problem, we are given this example. What is the slope of a line passing through negative one, three, and two, negative one? So our formula we know is, and all we have to do is plug into this formula. So let's label our points. So we have x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and then plug in. So our y sub 2, negative 1, minus y sub 1, minus 3, over x sub 2, minus, and be careful here because you're minus, you're subtracting x sub 1, but the whole x sub 1 value is negative 1. So minus negative 1. So our final answer is negative four-thirds. Next, we're going to be classifying lines by their slope. So this will be helpful when, say, you're just given the m value, and if it's positive or negative or zero, you'll know what the line looks like, even though you just have the m value, and vice versa. You'll have more of a general idea of what the slope is just looking at a line. So for a positive slope, that's going to look something like this line, and its m value could be something like one. Now we can actually figure that out using the formula. So if we have a point here and say, I'll make that bigger. If we have a point here and say that is um, 3, 3, and we have, let's use 0, 0 as a point. We have 0, 0 also. We can use the slope formula to find m as 1. This is a positive number, so this is positive slope. This is what a negative slope looks like, and if our m is negative 1, we can prove that by plugging in these numbers here, so negative 3, 3, and 0, 0. And if we plug those into the formula, we get, we get negative 1, which is a negative slope. For a 0 slope, that's going to be a horizontal line. 
So the equation for that line would be something like y equals 3. And you'll notice that instead of being in the usual y equals mx plus b form, it just has the 3, and that is the b value. So that means that the m value is 0, which is our 0 slope. Finally, let's move on to our undefined slope, which is a vertical line. You may find this similar to when we use the vertical line test. So once again, to remind you what that is, that's when you have a function and a vertical line can pass through two points. And remember, we said that was not a function. So function, it's not a function, which leads us to how we can prove this is, our, this is a defined slope. So let's take a point. Um, we can say that this point here is 5, 5, and this is 5, negative 5. And we get to the point in the problem where we are dividing by 0, which you may remember is undefined. So this is undefined slope. So, an example problem. Our directions are to, without graphing, tell whether the slope rises, falls, is horizontal, or is vertical. So, once again, just highlighting our information, rises, falls, horizontal, vertical. So, those we know as vertical, negative, sorry, positive, negative, horizontal, or undefined, as we just covered. We can do this by plugging each of the points into the slope formula, which we know already. Once again, the first step is to label each x and y value. So we have x1, y1, x2, and y2. And then we plug this into our formula, which we already know as m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we have these values, and we're going to plug them in. Negative 4 minus 0, 2 minus be careful here, negative 6 equals negative 1 half, which is a negative slope, so we know that it falls. We're going to go through the same process for each of the remaining values. Once again, we plug into our already known slope formula with our values, so negative 1 minus 6, 4 minus negative 4. Once again, our slope is negative and it therefore falls. Moving on to our final set of points, we will plug these into the formula and we get a positive answer which means that it rises. Next we're going to be connecting parallel and perpendicular lines to our slope concept and you should remember this from geometry but parallel means the lines do not intersect so I'll draw that in. Lines that do not intersect. Two lines and they do not intersect with each other. Perpendicular lines, you may remember these form a right angle, so those are perpendicular lines. It might actually be easier to see not on a graph, so I'll draw those again. Parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Two lines that have the same slope, if you think about it, that means they're going to be parallel. So if you have a line that has a slope of one, and you have another line that has a slope of 1, they are parallel lines. So the slope is the same. Whereas for perpendicular lines, it's say if one has a slope of 1, and the other has a slope of negative 1, these are also perpendicular lines because they form a right angle. And therefore these slopes are not only reciprocals, because that's 1, and 1 over 1, but negative reciprocals. Because remember, 1 is has a slope of 1, and the other has a slope of negative 1. And if you use negative reciprocals, 1 over 1 is the same thing as 1. To use an, a more clear example of that, you could have uh, the first one would have a slope of, let's say, 3 fourths. And that would look something like this. Then it's perpendicular line would be the negative reciprocal. So we know the reciprocal is 4 thirds and the negative is negative 4 thirds. So an example problem. The directions are tell whether the lines are parallel I'll draw that in. Parallel sorry parallel, perpendicular or neither. So our first problem that is a line through negative 2, 2 
and 0, negative 1. So let's just draw that out just so we get a general idea of what that actually looks like. So this is our x and y axes. And then negative 2, 2, so that's around here. And 0, negative 1. So a line goes through those two points. And it's our line. So first we need to find the slopes. This is once again using our slope formula, which a reminder is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we are going to plug in our two values over here, don't forget about those, and find the slopes as it is our first step. So we are going to plug in negative 1 minus 2. So negative 1 minus 2, and then we have 0 minus negative 2. So we have negative 3 over 2, which is the slope of our first line. And then our second line is our second line is a line through negative 4, negative 1. So let's plot that point. Use a different color this time. That point is through negative 4, negative 1. So let's say that's here. And 2, 3. So there, and our line is through those points, so we'll connect those. And you can probably already tell what kind of lines these are, but we're going to prove it mathematically, of course. So let's find the slope of this line next. Plug it into our formula. And this is our slope for this line. And as you can see, it is the negative reciprocal of this line. These are negative reciprocals. which means, as you probably have figured out, that these are perpendicular lines. Finally, slopes can be used for average, average rates of change. So, as the book defines, slope can be used to represent an average rate of change, or how much one quantity changes on average relative to the change in another quantity. So, you might have a graph that looks something like this, where you have on one axis hours, and on the other axis, miles. And so if you're graphing this and you say for the first hour you went, this is 100, you went 50 miles, you'd have that point. Sorry, it's a very basic graph. For the first hour you went 50 miles, the second hour you went 75 miles, the third hour you went 100 miles. You could connect these and have a line and then figure out the slope to know how many miles per hour. Similarly, you can use this for degrees per day. And this is just finally just a way to wrap into, to wrap up the chapter and to move into how it can relate to everyday life.